as I call you to worship this morning. Hear in these words why we stop where we are to worship and praise our God each week. These are verses from Psalm 62, starting with verse 5. Listen for God. Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from him. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you people trust in him at all times. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. God has spoken one thing. Okay, make it two things that I myself has heard, that strength belongs to God and faithful loves comes, love comes from you, my God, and that you may repay everyone according to their deeds. In our story for today, Moses' people are going to beg him for water. And eventually he's going to take his staff and he's going to hit a rock and water's going to pour out and they're going to be satisfied. But with God as our rock and with the living water offered, imagine how satisfied. Well, good day and welcome to worship. It's about being spiritually dry. It's about looking for that well that we can tap into, that we can pump the handle on to find refreshment for our soul so that we can fill our cup. I mean, we're not asking for an overflow here. Lord, we just need to drink your living water. We need to be together in worship. Sure, our spirits can connect in the, this online virtual deal, but you know our heart. What we really want is to gather together so we feel dry. Give us you to drink. Dear Lord, these are uncertain times. This world is in chaos. I just can't list all the ways again. You know them so well, Lord. You hear our prayers every day, and some days they have sucked the living water from us, or they've tried to. 
You invite us to come to you every day, to sit with you, to find you in prayer, to offer ourselves and surrender to just being in your presence, to having a sense that you are near, that you haven't left, that perfect love does drive out fear, and that it's in you that we find that perfect love, and you love us. That is prayer, being in your presence, sitting until we feel your presence. And as we begin to settle our soul, Lord, you invite us to share our list, our list of, can you help me here, Lord? Will you heal my daughter, my dad, my friend? Will you walk alongside if healing isn't possible so that they can know your presence, so that their relationship with you will lovingly transition them to the next piece of their journey? Lord, there are folks in our church family that we would lift up to you in prayer. And there are folks in our own family that we want to lift up to you in prayer. We name them. It's so easy for us to say their name because they are never far from our thoughts and hopes for them. So we say their name. Say their name. These words have been spoken for Brianna Taylor in these months as her story of tragedy has highlighted a system of justice that feels broken. Give us your heart, Jesus. Use this time we are living in to put unjust events through your lens of justice for all people. And I'm just going to say, if you feel like we are there, like we're doing it right already, give us peace. And if you feel like there is not equality for all, then stir us to fight for your justice in humble, peaceful ways. Yet bold, strike the rock to bring living water kind of ways. Dear Lord, how would you use us to bring a a blessing to you this week? How can we almost literally be a pipe through which your living water might flow to someone else? Because you're asking us to use our spiritual influence and use the witness of our lives to tell of how you made a difference in our lives. You ask us to serve and to love and to show up. Lord, we want to stand united. You've given us a way to put together all of our unique differences in one unified prayer. As you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How many of you have ever played the game Rock, Paper, Scissors? Do you know how to play that? Have you played that with your family? In case you haven't, it's kind of like this. You hold out your hand like a platform, and then with the other hand, you either go rock, paper, or scissors. So how, how it happens is you do three rocks, a rock, paper, scissors, and then you say go, and you choose one of them. So it's rock, paper, scissors, go, and you choose one. Now, here's how you know if you win. If you chose rock and somebody else chose scissors, rock crushes scissors. If you chose scissors and somebody else chose paper, scissors cuts paper. And if you chose paper and somebody else chose a rock, paper covers rock. Okay, play against me. You play at home, okay? Rock, paper, scissors, go. Now, if you chose scissors, I won, didn't I? But if you chose paper, you won. If we both chose rock, well, we tied. Let's do it again. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Did you win that time or did I? Okay, one more time. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Was it a tie? Did we both do a rock? Well, it's hard to know, isn't it? Here's the great thing about rock, paper, and scissors. Each one of those could be a winner. 
For instance, if you wanted to write a letter, only a paper is going to work, right? If you want to cut paper, only scissors are going to work. And let's say you're thirsty. You need a rock. You're probably saying to yourself, what are you talking about? How do you get water from a rock? Well, I'll tell you. You might be looking at me like I'm crazy, but in our lesson today, our Bible lesson, that's exactly what happened. We need, our bodies need water to, to work. I mean, we can kind of do without food, but we got to have water. Have you ever been really, really thirsty? Like you were out riding your bike for, I don't know, hours, and you just came in and you're like, Mom, Dad, I'm so thirsty. Or you played seven innings of baseball and you were just parched. Well, the Israelites were out wandering in the desert, walking in the desert with Moses, and they were thirsty. So they began to grumble to Moses. We're so thirsty. Get us some water. Can't you find us some water? Moses didn't know what to do because he's looking around and there is no water. So he goes to his tent. He falls on his knees and he prays this impossible prayer to God. God, I don't know how you're going to do this one, but these people are thirsty and I need water. And he heard really clearly God say to him, Moses, Gather the leaders together, get your staff, walk out into the desert, you'll find a rock, hit the rock with your staff, and water will come out. So Moses just did it. He gathered the leaders, he took a walk, he used his staff, he hit the rock, and out came water. Now I know that sounds impossible, and I know that sounds unbelievable, but here's the lesson, kids. With God, nothing's impossible. He wants us to come to him to pray. He wants us to ask him the impossible. And then when he gives us a way, he wants us to just obey and do what he says. You can ask God's help for the impossible. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear God, when we face impossible situations, when we've just had it with our Zoom school, when we've had it with, oh, so many things, teach us to pray. Help us to hear. Give us strength to obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a reading from Exodus 17, Water from a Rock. The whole Israelite community broke camp and set out from the Sin Desert to continue their journey, as the Lord commanded. They set up their camp at Rephidah, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people argued with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why are you arguing with me? Why are you testing the Lord? But the people were very thirsty for water there, and they complained to Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with this people? They are getting ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of Israel's elders with you. Take in your hand the shepherd's rod that you used to strike the Nile River and go. I'll be there in front of you, standing on a rock at Horeb. Hit the rock. Water will come out of it, and the people will be able to drink. Moses did so while the Israel's elders watched. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites argued with and tested the Lord, asking, is the Lord really with us or not? Hello. It's good to be together. In keeping with that theme of rock, paper, scissors, go from the children's message. You know, I, I, I learn a lot from kids' messages, probably as much as I do from any other message I get from the world. You know, I think our kids have seen, most of them, many of them, have seen a lot of the episodes of Stranger Things. Now, I've watched enough of those episodes to maybe be dangerous to know that in them, when you watch, you're, you need to expect the unexpected. 
that's kind of the way it is in the book of Exodus also. Expect the unexpected. The parting of the Red Sea was back up against nothing, impossible. And then God came through and things were possible. Stranger things, I guess. Today's passage is about water again. We all know that you have to have something <clears throat> to wash down meat and bread. The Sinai wilderness, that desert, was brutal. They had wandered around for a long time. I mean, the freedom was awesome. God, thank you for all of that. But at some point, you kind of forget about that Passover night when, when the angel of death just saw that you had been obedient to God because of the sacrifice that had happened in your house and just passed over you and that you left all of that oppression for freedom. <coughs> the dry heat, oh, the thirst is making them wonder if what they were saved for, I mean, what were they saved for? You know what I mean? I'm going to say this out loud. After seven months of this COVID postponement of one great thing after another, with isolation and separation from all of you, I can understand the grumbling. I'm just going to say it. You can go for quite a while, some days, some weeks, but these months, it's just a little too much. Take this week, for instance. I don't know why, but my laptop video cam will not record me, and I'm trying this a whole different way. I, I recorded the prayers, and I was like on my cell phone, so I went to my cell phone, and I was about 12 seconds too long to get it to go to a Dropbox. So you can imagine what happened. My good friend Russ came over with his video cam. And after he recorded, Cheryl, he recorded me. Ding, dang, and done, right? Should have been a done deal, but, but it wasn't. For some mysterious reason, it didn't record. So, because of the grace of Russ, he comes back the next day. That was this morning, actually. It, take, it took us, I'm not kidding, six tries. I... I prayed that prayer six different times, kind of changing it up every time before finally, I don't know, the video gods found favor with us and, and, and that video cam finally recorded. And we're looking at each other like, which one of us is gonna grumble first? Know what I mean? Ever happened to you? That's one of the messages, I think, of the passage that Spencer read. Testing God while you grumble against God proves that you have a really short memory. God can be trusted to provide. Why would God show his power and might through an extraordinary display of saving the Israelites' firstborn? of seeing me through for seven months, Sunday after Sunday, week after week, to fail me now. I don't know for sure. You know, every single day to decide, you know, I think maybe dehydration is the, gonna be the way that I knock you people off. That just doesn't sound like the God that I've come to know. But that thirst wasn't about dying. Thirst was not the way the people were going to die. The thirst was about teaching them and therefore teaching us to yearn, to stretch, to remember that we need God. Just like Moses did early, stretching uh, over those waters to get them to part, stretching out now to strike the rock, Psalm 52 sounds something like this, starting at verse 5. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. 
Striking the rock is a call for obedience. It reminds us to be, to go to God, our rock, to go to God in obedience, to find him, even when it doesn't make sense. Striking that rock, choosing to lean and to trust when you're dehydrated from a chaotic season of unsettledness in your life. Rock, paper, scissors. I want to ask you as you play this game of life these days, where are you finding the wins? Where are you finding joy in these days? What are you grateful for? I realize that can be a really irritating question, especially when things are hard. But I'm convinced that to ponder what we are grateful for and to find joy in the difficult times helps you to discover where the path is, maybe where the trail head is for the next leg of your journey, but where the path is, because we can sure get off the well-worn, beaten path to God. I can. Even when it makes more sense to give up, Striking the rock, turning to God, is a declaration of faith. You know, I have met this couple that lives on the other side of Rockford, and I, I don't really know how they found grace, but they found grace, and in finding grace, they found me. And we have known each other for a couple years. In the midst of that year, there have been some, some hard times for them. But in the last year, the, the guy got a job and was working hard until he got furloughed during this pandemic. You know, I just don't know how many people have enough savings ever to be able to go for month after month after month without a job. Now he had found a lot of odd jobs, helping with roofing, helping, but just a lot of odd jobs to make some of the ends meet. But through another friend of mine, I found out about a job opportunity. And this friend of mine helped to work a plan to get him an interview. Now it turns out that being poor is a long, long wander in the wilderness. A text to let you know when the employment tests you need to take are gonna be ready takes a cell phone that'll receive texts. And in order to get an email to let you know when the drug testing will be and where you need to go to get that and all the rules, well, it takes a computer. And I, I can't even tell you how many fits and starts of navigating this process from interview to hire it took. Arg. I'll tell you, even the HR lady put the wrong deadline on his drug testing so that when he drove from Rockford to Belvedere to have the test, he was denied and turned away. I was really angry. I was angry for him. But here's the really crazy part. He wasn't angry. He was just grateful for an opportunity and willing to try it again. Yeah, he was willing to have someone to walk alongside. I was the grumbler. I know that not everyone is worshiping online every week. Some of you are choosing to leave the house to do church on Sunday. But I encourage you to hang on. Not to grow weary in finding a way to worship together. Because lifting our hearts up in worship and praise is an important piece to hanging on to a life of uh, not grumbling. So don't grow weary in finding a way to worship together. That God who provides. The God who is present. It is one of the ways that we strike the rock to receive the living water Worship is a means of grace. The people, you know, back to the Israelites, had been eating manna for a long, long time. Now, I understand that manna tasted like honey wafers, and it looked like coriander seeds. You might want to look that up. What does a coriander seed look like? 
They could let, collect about two quarts a day per person, except, you know, toward the Lord's Day. Then they had to collect two quarts worth so that it would last two days. And they were faithful. They just did it. They had been doing it. I don't even think they liked manna that well, but they had been doing it for a long time. They were obedient and they did what God asked. But sometimes, even when you are doing what God asks and following God's will, you can walk right into hard and great problems. The second truth in this passage about God, he doesn't lead where he doesn't go. If God leads you to it, God is there to lead you through it. Now, I know that sounds like an epitaph or a, or a bumper sticker, but, but think about it. If he leads you to it, he's going to be there to lead you through it. I'm not saying that the Israelites' life was easy. And honestly, I don't believe your life is easy right now either. But stop yourself from downshifting so quickly to blaming God or blaming people. Man, God, you had just gotten me to church. I was sitting right there in that pew. I had found a church home where I could find you and hear from you. God, why can't my kindergartner sit five minutes in front of a computer? Why is my job so hard? in the midst of pandemic. I can't stand wearing the mask. You lead me out of slavery using awesome and mighty deeds. You opened the Red Sea and you killed all of those military people that were chasing me only to kill me and my kids in the desert. I'm telling you, the blame game will eat you up inside, my friends. So here is our good news. Because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we don't have to go to Moses to complain. We can reach right out to God. God who invites us to pour our heart out to him in prayer. Ask yourself, who are you going to first these days? Your friend, your spouse, or God? Don't go to God when you've exhausted everything else. Let God be your first place. What can you remember about God? Remind yourself of God's faithfulness in the past. Rehearse the story. Go back to Psalm 62. Not every day is a fun rock, paper, scissors kind of day, if you know what I mean. But even though each one of those can be a winner, I am here to tell you, when you choose the rock, you have chosen a winner every time. You have chosen the God who gives us living water. I challenge you this week to decide how you might open yourself up to hitting the rock, that you might be that pipe, that conduit. Who might you allow God to pour through you out to this week? Who might you pray for? Who might you call or write a note to? Who might you be used by God to pour his living water through you? Who might it be that you go visit? Who is it going to be? I expect you to receive a call this week. Somebody is going to call just to say, how are you doing? How can I pray for you? Here's what I know to be true. What do you want me to know about you? You do it too. Reach out, will you? Be the living water. In the game of rock, paper, scissors. Strike the rock. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.